This course will cover the basics of linear regulators and SEPIC switch mode power supplies. SEPIC is an abbreviation of Single Ended Primary Inductor Converter. In this course, we will take a closer look at linear and switch mode SEPIC regulators. The circuit shows a simple shunt voltage regulator that operates by way of the Zener diodes action of maintaining a constant voltage across itself when the current through it is sufficient to take it into the Zener breakdown region. This regulator is used for very simple low power applications where the currents involved are small and the load is permanently connected across the Zener diode, such as a voltage reference or voltage source circuits. Once the R sub Z is calculated, removing the load L will allow the full load current plus the Zener current through the diode and may exceed the diode's maximum current rating, thereby damaging it. The regulation of this circuit is also not very good because the Zener current, and hence the Zener voltage, will vary depending on Vn and inversely depending on the load current. Adding an emitter follower stage to the simple shunt regulator forms a simple series voltage regulator and substantially improves the regulation of the circuit. The pass transistor, QC, automatically adjusts its collector emitter resistance to keep the output one diode drop below the Zener voltage, VZ. In other words, QC forms an NPN emitter follower that buffers the Zener voltage. This regulator is classified as series because the transistor regulating element, QC, appears in series with the load. QC sources current to the load. QR is added to regulate the output. QR monitors V out and adjusts the base of QC. The correct amount of current is always being delivered to the R1, R2 divider to keep the output at the desired value. To limit the current output, transistor QCL is added. QCL is normally cut off. When the current I out is great enough to put a 0.5 volt drop across the RCL resistor, QCL starts to move out of cutoff and pull more current through the 1k ohm resistor. This QCL current lowers the QC base, which causes QC to reduce its collector to emitter current. As V out falls, QR goes into cutoff, and QCL gains complete control over QC. This topology adds the current foldback transistor in the place of the QCL in the previous slide. This circuit maintains a constant V out over a range of loads that require sufficiently small current. Notice that the QFB transistor and QCL transistor only differ in their base connection. Rather than sensing the RS drop directly, the QFB transistor base is attached to a resistive divider, and so it becomes active at a different stage than the QCL transistor current limit. Because the R3, R4 divider draws additional current, quiescent current will be higher than in the simple current limiter case. In general, the advantages of linear regulators are simplicity, low noise, no EMI issues, and fast design. The major shortcomings of this type of regulator are low efficiency, especially when V out is much smaller than Vn, and difficult thermal management due to the heat generated by the power loss. Linear regulators can be classified by their series transistor. There are NPN, PNP, NPN PNP, PMOS, and NMOS types. This table shows the advantages and disadvantages of different topologies. The majority of linear regulators are still bipolar due to the lower cost in comparison to MOS devices. Linear regulators are preferred in many designs.
Compared with switching regulators, they provide lower cost, fewer external components, and less circuit complexity. However, linear regulators have drawbacks. Reduced battery life, higher cell count, larger dropout voltage, and heat. Though not unique to portable equipment, these problems call for solutions different from those associated with AC-powered equipment. A linear regulator specification which is critical in battery or low power designs is quiescent current, also called operating current or ground current. This current never makes it to the load. It flows from the battery to power the regulator itself. The importance of this spec is that it is proportional to the magnitude of quiescent current with respect to load current. For example, if the load current is 350 milliamps and the quiescent current is 1 milliamp, its contribution to inefficiency is only about 0.28%. However, for 1 milliamp loads, the percentage loss is much worse, 50%. Load currents often vary widely so the net effect of quiescent current on battery life depends on a combination of these two cases. The question is, which load occurs for the greatest amount of time? If load currents are small for most of the time, then one must ensure a low quiescent current to achieve high efficiency. This table shows how quiescent currents affect efficiency for three devices. A common low power regulator often used in AC line power designs, the LM78L05, and two regulators optimized for low operating current, the MAX8863 and MAX882. Thermal issues are important for any linearly regulated supply, but in portable devices, especially handheld devices, the problem becomes acute. Though ICs can handle only a limited amount of heat, new surface mount packages are helping. The 5-pin SOT23 package is rated for over 500 milliwatts and some exposed pad packages are rated for almost 2 watts. The single-ended primary inductor converter or SEPIC is a type of DC to DC converter allowing the voltage at its output to be greater than, less than, or equal to that at its input. The output of the SEPIC is controlled by the duty cycle of the control transistor. A SEPIC is essentially a boost converter followed by a buck boost converter. Therefore it is similar to a traditional buck boost converter. But this topology has the advantage of having a non-inverted output. In other words the output is the same voltage polarity as the input. Using a series capacitor to couple energy from the input to the output and thus can respond more gracefully to a short circuit at the output and being capable of true shutdown. When the switch is turned off, its output voltage drops to zero volts following a fairly hefty transient dump of charge. SEPICs are useful in applications in which a battery voltage can be above and below that of the regulator's intended output. For example, a single lithium ion battery typically discharges from 4.2 volts to 3 volts. If the other components in the system require 3.3 volts, then the SEPIC would be effective. During a SEPIC's steady state operation, the average voltage across capacitor C1, noted here as VC1, is equal to the input voltage, Vn. Because capacitor C1 blocks direct current, the average current through IC1 is zero, making inductor L2 the only source of DC load current. Therefore, the average current through inductor L2, or IL2, is the same as the average load current and hence independent of the input voltage. Looking at the average voltages, the following can be written. Vn equals VL1 plus VC1 plus VL2. Because the average voltage of VC1 is equal to Vn, VL1 is equal to minus VL2. For this reason, the two inductors can be wound on the same core. Since the voltages are the same in magnitude, their effects of the mutual inductance will be zero, 
assuming the polarity of the windings is correct. Also, since the voltages are the same in magnitude, the ripple currents from the two inductors will be equal in magnitude. The average currents can be summed as follows. Average capacitor currents must be zero. So you end up with ID1 is equal to IL1 minus IL2. When switch S1 is turned on, current IL1 increases and the current IL2 goes more negative. Mathematically it decreases due to the direction. The energy to increase the current IL1 comes from the input source. Since S1 is a short while closed, and the instantaneous voltage VC1 is approximately Vn, the voltage VL2 is approximately minus Vn. Therefore, the capacitor C1 supplies the energy to increase the magnitude of the current in IL2, and thus increase the energy stored in L2. The easiest way to visualize this is to consider the bias voltages of the circuit in a DC state, then close S1. When switch S1 is turned off, the current IC1 becomes the same as the current IL1, since inductors do not allow instantaneous changes in current. The current IL2 will continue in the negative direction. In fact, it never reverses direction. It can be seen from the diagram that a negative IL2 will add to the current IL1 to increase the current delivered to the load. Using Kirchhoff's current law, it can be shown that ID1 equals IC1 minus IL2. It can then be concluded that while S1 is off, power is delivered to the load from both L2 and L1. C1, however, is being charged by L1 during this off cycle and will in turn recharge L2 during the on cycle. Because the voltage across capacitor C1 may reverse direction every cycle, a non-polarized capacitor should be used. However, a polarized tantalum or electrolytic capacitor may be used in some cases because the potential across capacitor C1 will not change unless the switch is closed long enough for a half cycle of resonance with inductor L2, and by this time the current in inductor L1 could be quite large. The capacitor Cn is required to reduce the effects of the parasitic conductance and internal resistance of the power supply. The boost buck capabilities of the SEPIC are possible because of capacitor C1 and inductor L2. Inductor L1 and switch S1 create a standard boost converter which generates a voltage that is higher than Vn, whose magnitude is determined by the duty cycle of the switch S1. Since the average voltage across C1 is Vn, the output voltage Vo is Vs1 minus Vn. If Vs1 is less than double Vn, then the output voltage will be less than the input voltage. If Vs1 is greater than double Vn, then the output voltage will be greater than the input voltage. The evolution of switch mode power supplies can be seen by coupling the two inductors in a SEPIC converter together, which begins to resemble a flyback converter the most basic of the transformer isolated switch mode power supply topologies. To summarize, in this course we have presented a variety of linear regulators as well as the single-ended primary inductor or SEPIC converter. For more information on this topic, please go to our website at www.maximintegrated.com under Products, Power, and Linear Regulators. We hope you enjoy this video and see you again in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.